Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Today we're doing illustrative math, grade eight, unit number three, lesson eight, practice problems. Okay, first question here, select all equations that have graphs with the same y-intercept. What part of these is the y-intercept? It's this last value. Which ones have the same y-intercept? A, C, nope, nope. Hey, ding dong, pay more attention. A, D, E, and F. Positives, negatives, they get kind of tricky sometimes. Those all have a y-intercept of negative 8. Okay, next, create a graph showing the equations y equals 1 fourth x and y equals 1 fourth x minus 5. Explain how the graphs are the same and how they are different. Okay, the first one, no y-intercept, starts at, we use red for this one, starts at 0, 0. Slope is 1 fourth, up 1 over 4, up 1 over 4, going backwards, down 1 over 4, down 1 over 4. Ooh, that's not my best graphing ever. Let's just pretend that it is, though. Okay, and our other line I'll do in blue. Y equals 1 fourth X subtract 5. That means our Y intercept is negative 5. We still go rise of 1, run of 4. So up 1 over 4. Okay. There. Okay, how are the graphs the same? They have the same slope. Explain how they're different. Different intercept. Same slope, different intercept. That means they're going to be parallel to each other. Okay, what's next? Ooh, cable company. I like to watch TV. Cable company charges $70 a month for cable service to existing customers. Find a linear equation representing the relationship between X, the number of months of service, and Y, the total amount paid in dollars by an existing customer. So our rate of change, our slope, is $70. So this is y equals 70x, $70 per month. For new customers, there's an additional one-time $100 service fee. Repeat the pre previous problem for new customers. So y equals 70x, because the amount per month is the same. Then you have to add on a $100 service fee. When the two equations are graphed in the coordinate plane, how are they related to each other geometrically? Well, let's quickly just sketch out what these are going to look like. y equals 70x, that's going to be pretty steep. Goes through 0, 0. The second one here, though, is y equals 70x plus 100. So we're starting at $100, but we're going to have the same slope. So it's going to look kind of like that. How are they related to each other? They are parallel. Okay, next. A mountain road is five miles long, gains elevation at a constant rate. After two miles, the elevation is 5,500 feet above sea level. After four miles, the elevation is 6,200 feet above sea level. Find the elevation of the road at the point where the road begins. So the road doesn't start at sea level. 
it's a mountain road. So, if we think after two miles we were 5,500 feet above sea level, and after four miles we were 6,200 feet above sea level, how much did we go up? Well, from 5,500 to 6,200 is 700 feet up. And we did that over from two miles to four miles. We did that over two miles. If we want to know where the road begins, that's at zero. Well, that's two away from two. So if we go up 700 feet to go from two miles into the road to the start of the road, that's going two miles downhill. So we're going to go that same 700 feet for two miles, but downhill. 5,500 subtract 700 is 40... 800. So the road begins at 400 or 4,800 feet above sea level. Describe where you would see the point in part A on a graph where Y represents elevation feet, X represents the distance along the road in miles. If we think about a graph, that's going to be the starting value, zero miles in or 4,800 feet, and we go up from there. That's a graph of our road. That point right here is the y-intercept. Match each graph to its situation. Sorry, we're going to have to zoom this out quite a bit so that we can kind of see here, but the graph that represents the perimeter y in units for an equilateral, tri equilateral triangle with a side length of x units. The slope of the line is 3. Well, if the side lengths are 0, the perimeter is 0, so this is going to have to go through 0, 0. That means it can't be A and it can't be B, so it has to be C or D. And we need a slope of 3, which means a rise of 3 and a run of 1. That looks like graph C. That has a rise of 3 and a run of 1. So 1 goes with C. What's next? The amount of money Y in a cash box after X tickets are purchased for the carnival games. The slope of the line is one fourth. So we need a slope of one fourth. And amount of money in the cash box. There could be money at the beginning, or there could have been no money. This doesn't really say. But we do know that we need a slope of one-fourth, one over four. So rise of one, run of four. D is our other one that goes through zero. That doesn't look like a rise of one and a run of four. B also looks like it's steeper than that. But A goes up one over four, up one over four. So number two is A. Okay, next one. Number of chapters read Y after X days. The slope of the line is 5 over 4. Slope 5 over 4. We go up 5 over 4. Let's look at D here. Up 5 over 4. So that's going to be this one. 
So D goes with number three. Okay, number four. Graph shows the cost in dollars Y of a muffin delivery and the number of muffins ordered. The slope of the line is two. So we need a slope of two. And this shows the cost of the muffin delivery and the muffins. So we need a y-intercept and a slope of two. So B, that goes up two over one, up two over one, up two over one. And it looks like they pay $3 for delivery. So B, graph B goes with number four. Okay, A goes with 2, B goes with 4, C goes with 1, and D goes with 3. That's my last question, right? Yep. This has been another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.